Well, the concept in this particular case which I want to stress upon is whether we need to use a prophylactic capsule tension ring when we're dealing with a case of a hypermature cataract with a hard, dense brown nucleosclerosis. So let's take this case example to point. Patient had hypermature cataract and severe wrinkling of anterior capsule with anterior capsular fibrosis with a rock hard cataract. The initial footage of this video is missing because my OT assistant switched on the camera a bit late. The anticipated problems is I definitely know that the zonules would be weak and there would be a terrible amount of zonular stress which is because of the stretch and torque forces which I may exert while handling this hard cataract. And this is the rationale behind me using a prophylactic capsule tension ring. The preferred technique in such cases where the bag is filled up with the nucleus to insert the capsule tension ring is by the fishtail technique. In this technique, the CTR is folded on itself, passed through the 2.8 mm incision. Convexity is then nudged and gently pushed under the anterior capsular opening. Now each limb is then fed into the capsular bag so the limb slips but because of the fact that uh, the edge of the rexus holds the capsule tension ring it's quite easy uh, to retrieve the eyelet because the eyelet doesn't spring into the angle using a Sinsky hook through the side port I'm able to engage the eyelet as it is quite visible since it's already flexed by uh, its passage out of the capsular bag and tuck it into place. While inserting the second limb of the capsule tension ring, I have a similar problem. However, I really don't have to worry too much because the flexed position of the capsule tension ring enables me to visualize the eyelet of the capsule tension ring. So I retrieve it and then I gently tuck it into place. After a careful hydro dissection, I begin the phaco chop maneuver and uh, my choice is a sharp 1.75 millimeter chopper. The phaco tip is exposed to about 2 millimeters and uh, using a parameters of a 50% burst mode, a duty cycle of 90%, a vacuum setting of 350 millimeters of mercury, I impale deep within the nucleus, both longitudinally and vertically. So it's important to have a good excursion of the tip through the nucleus. And once I crack open the nucleus, the lateral separation is performed using the chopper which is uh, bent in such a way that the sharp tip faces towards the center and the blunt end faces the posterior capsule. This not only increases the safety while performing the lateral separation but also increases the effectivity of the separation. I work my way through this dense brown nuclear cataract by chopping it down into many smaller pieces because I'm predominantly using mechanical force of disassembly. As you can see, the only FACO energy used is that uh, minuscule amount of burst that I give to impale the nuclear tip. Now the, crack, the cracking of the nucleus into smaller bits is purely mechanical. So when you crack this hard nucleus into multiple small fragments, we're using primarily mechanical force to disassemble a large part of the nucleus. In addition, it's very important that uh, while rotating this nucleus that you give very gentle pressure because in hypermature cataracts there tends to be weak zonules and a thin posterior capsule that will trampoline and also be extremely mobile. So the first piece of the fragment is now removed from the capsular bag, brought to the safe zone and emulsified. And for this I'm using the same settings. However, by pressing the foot pedal down less, so I get a lesser number of bursts at a preset power of 
so that actually end up with lesser amount of energy delivery. And this is the advantage of using the burst mode fake comb. The amount of energy delivery is controlled by your foot pedal itself. As the surgery proceeds, I now replace the sharp chopper with a Sinsky hook because the sharp chopper is no longer needed and also the sharp chopper may inadvertently rupture the posterior capsule or dig into the iris. The emulsification of the nuclear fragments is then done in a very controlled manner. The Stellaris machine being one with a venturi pump, I need to set only the vacuum of about 350 millimeters of mercury. The aspiration flow rate will be dictated by the vacuum that I have set. The other advantage that I have with this machine is that I use the dual linear foot pedal by which uh, I have control of the irrigation and vacuum in the pitch and the power delivery in the yaw. So this enables me to have a, a differential control of the vacuum as well as the FACO power delivery. Usually under normal circumstances one would uh, need to uh, reduce the uh, vacuum and the flow rate as you move towards the last piece, especially in a hypermature cataract. But because of the dual linear control, I'm able to do it without having to change my settings too much. At the end of the procedure, the wound, apart from mild hydration, looks quite pristine. There's no evidence of wound burn at all. This shows, this is because of the way in which I was able to manage the power delivery both with the combination of the burst mode and with the using mechanical forces to disassemble the nucleus. After implanting the intraocular lens, the little bit of cortex is then washed away using a coaxial IA handpiece. The viscoelastic is cleaned from the anterior chamber. And I apply pressure over the clear corneal lip with a cotton tip part for a count of 10 to 20 seconds. And if the wound is well constructed, this is enough to seal it. Gently insufflating the anterior chamber to the side port, and the case comes to a satisfactory conclusion.